Hello everyone, my name is Steven Zapata. I'm a concept artist, illustrator, online art teacher, and former instructor at Art Center College of Design. I would like to introduce you to my new drawing course, Form from Imagination, a course designed to help you draw with confidence from your mind. Maybe you want to be a professional illustrator or designer. Maybe you want to be a master with a pencil. Or maybe you just want to be the best artist that you can be. Beautiful goals, but it's not always clear how to improve the work that you do from imagination. Over the past six months, I've taken all of the little eurekas, tips, and essential exercises that gave me confidence drawing from my mind and compiled them into a sequential course. We start with the absolute foundations, covering the scientific nature of light and shadow, how to hatch, how to create flat tones, how to render spheres and cubes. And step by step, we move through combined shapes, complex shapes, organic shapes. We cover how to simplify extremely complex subjects like the head into basic shapes so that you can handle them more easily from your head. We look at how to understand and treat details. And by the end of these 14 chapters with over 50 video lessons, you'll be ready to do complex designs from your mind with fidelity and energy. And all the demos are done in pencil on paper, so you can do all of the assignments even if you don't have a fancy digital art setup. But I also have demos, instructions, and modifications to the assignments for those who do want to do them digitally. Here's how it works. Go to formfromimagination.com and sign up for the course. Download the assignment book and start watching the lectures. Do the assignments at your own pace. Take your time with them and use this self-study to develop your patience. When you're done, post your assignments in the exclusive community hub, and I'll personally critique your work with drawovers, diagrams, and advice. I want you to know, this course is no joke just because it's online. It is challenging content, and it is more complete than it would be if I was teaching this class at an art college as I have before. If I was teaching this class in person at Art Center today, I would just play these videos in class, knowing full well that they're the most concise, focused, edited, step-by-step -step way to convey the material. So I'm serious when I say, this course isn't just a substitute for a college-level course, it's better than a college level course. And you don't have to pay thousands of dollars per credit and wind up hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. So thank you for checking out the course. Thank you for watching this and for your support. And thank you for drawing and making your artwork. The world needs it. I'll see you soon. What up? What up? Yes, the Zapata is real, says Thumb Bauer. Can we get much higher? Can we get much higher? Oh, my lighting is all messed up. I don't usually stream in the evening. It's much darker than I'm used to. In the evening. Uh, I am, I've been messing with my uh, OBS settings, so apologies if I'm a little off on things. Mama Nova, hello. B-Man, well, uh, hello, Matej Kolar. Dissonant Sin says, is this live? It is live. It is live. Hello, Cursed Fetus. Thank you. You're cool, too. You are cool too. Um, I got a new PC coming. Relax, pup, what's wrong? I fed you, don't lie to me. I know you ate, you can't trick me. I got a new PC coming uh, tonight, maybe. So uh, hopefully next time we stream We'll get to go through the awful pain of troubleshooting a new setup. <laughs> Sorry. No, don't go licking my hands now. Can you see I'm trying to draw? Can you see I'm trying to draw? How's everybody doing? Uh, I have no idea what to draw. I don't feel like working on any of the, um, don't feel like working on any of these stuff I have going. What should I draw? What the hell should I draw? 
Somebody give me a stupid idea. No, no serious ideas. Don't give me stupid. Don't give me a serious idea. Don't give me your favorite character or your cutest character or anything like that. I need something to get me into it and then uh, maybe while I'm doing that, I'll know what I actually want to draw. Draw a cat doing a split. I am like really good at drawing. I am like really, really good at drawing. I'm like super freaking good at drawing. Super freaking good. Kurohije gives me five R's. Hey Steven, thank you for that meditation about drawing what you want. It hit the right spot at the right time. I am very happy to hear that. I'm so happy to hear that. I'm always happy to intersect with people in a positive way and to impact their art journey, again, hopefully, in a positive way. It means a lot, and thank you so much for the donation, Kurohiji, I appreciate it. You are very, very kind. You are very kind. There, I loved it. Oh, I can love donations now? So these little, little things I gotta do. Mr. Grinch? What does a Grinch look like? Uh, drawing the Grinch from memory is not... <laughs> that just looks like I'm drawing me the way I draw. I don't remember what the Grinch looks like at all. Does he have, um... He has like a pear-shaped head, right? Does he have ears? Does, that looks nothing like the Grinch. All right, well, that's the Grinch. That's, that's as good as you're gonna get. That's the Grinch. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. You're as cuddly as a cactus. You're as charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. He has like a mouse nose. I can't get too much into the details of the grinch -a, you know? I'm, I'm gonna get way too pulled into that. Um, if you're interested in the course, if you've ever even heard of my course, Form for Imagination, I should say it is on sale Black Friday. It's still going. It's 10% off any version. There are versions. Again, there is the core version, the premium version, the full feedback version, which is the premium version, plus instructor feedback in the exclusive Form from Imagination feedback community, which in case you don't know, it looks like this. Let's cover that cat butt with it. So when you get into it, the, uh, it look, it's every, every assignment, you know, you get an assignment book with the course, every assignment gets its own section, and you go in there and you post your assignment. So, you know, here Georgie did a very nice job on his sphere based on the sphere demo in the course, and Georgie is also an overachiever, so Georgie did it both um, uh, traditional and he did several versions digital and then I go in and I give feedback. Yeah, you know? so I give comments I write these little essays I have written I tried to count it the other day the course has been out for about less than a year and a half It's like a year and four months now or something like that. I tried to count it the other day based on my folders I've done many hundreds I think it's around <laughs> Uh, it's over 600 feedbacks um, based on my count, but um, I um, uh, I don't know the exact number. Uh, and a lot of them are little essays like this, and I do drawovers and adjustments and edits and things like that. So that's what it looks like. So that's when it's broken down by the individual assignments. And you can also just hit feed, and you can see everybody's assignments in the order that they have been posting them. So Joshua here did a very nice castle for assignment 10, Compound Forms Creative. And you can just see it all, instead of being separated by assignment, it's everybody's work, just in the order it was posted, and you can scroll forever and see 
hundreds of posts and assignments and feedbacks if you get the feedback version. Uh, I'm very proud of what I've done here and I'm very proud of all the students. Holy crap. I'll be right back. I'll let you look at the buck cat. Give me a second. Oh, sorry. My new PC got here and, uh, you know, I was waiting for it all day and I was like, you know, of course it'll show up right when I start streaming and that's just the way things go. They know. Everybody who needs to cross paths with your life, they all intuitively know when you're sort of sitting down to do the committal work, and they're like, all right, that's exactly when we're gonna intersect. That's exactly when we're gonna do it. It's freaking cold outside. All right, so I thought that wasn't gonna show up until a while later. Now, uh, you know, we'll stream for a bit. But now I got a new computer here. Can't hang out and draw ass cats all day. I gotta set this thing up. Um, all right, someone, now I'm totally distracted. We got a Grinch, we got a cat. What should I draw? Give me something else to draw. What was I saying before I left? I was showing the feedback community, right? Did I finish talking about that? I was just scrolling through, right? Anyway, yeah, there's hundreds of assignments. People give each other feedback. You can see everybody's work. You can get a lot of ideas. You can get inspired. People post their finished work too. I like that a lot. People are getting very ambitious with their assignments. But yeah, if you've ever considered you get the course, uh, I highly recommend you get the course. And now's a great time to you get the course because the you get the course is 10% off of the you get the course. And it's 10% off of any version of the You Get the Course. So if you ever wanted to You Get the Course, now's a great time to You Get the Course. I can just keep going. I have to say that I'm very proud of the course and the students and the sheer amount of hard work that people have done. <laughs> it is a tremendous amount of effort 
that everybody has put in. And I'll tell you what, given uh, such a tremendous amount of feedback over the past year and a half has kept me sharp. All right. Llama with a jetpack. I'm not gonna look up any of this stuff, so I'm doing everything from imagination. I mean, it needs to point somewhat at the ground or else it doesn't make any sense, right? What the hell do llamas' hands look like? They got like little fuzzy tails, right? I mean, excellent, supreme quality, absolutely transcendent, unbeatable, number one, world-class. It's 15 easy, dog. I mean, there's really not much else to be said about it. There really is not much else to be said about it. Hello to TB, hello to B-Man, hello to Farrakh, hello to Jeff, hello to Matej Kolar, hello to Colin Gallagher, hello to Ali Z. Stephen, when will it be time to harvest the broccoli you're growing on your head? <sighs> well, it's pretty far away. Cause I mean, I have a, I'm going for that. That's what I'm going for. That is my goal. It's gonna take a long time to get there, but we're not harvesting until we've achieved that and until we've lived that to our complete satisfaction. And my guess is that that living period is gonna be something like another 25 to 30 years of having that haircut. It's just the way it is. Bunions? Draw bunion? Like foot bunions? This is just a way to get me to draw feet. Yeah, it's like a diagrammatic bunion. That's where they come in, right? Sucks. That one's huge. That one's like a second toe. You gotta make it shiny so you make it a little darker and then you put the little highlight on it. See, it's easy. If you paid attention in art school, you would know how to do that stuff, but you didn't pay attention, did you? Would the course, would the course help with pen drawing? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, you would need to get a little creative about how to translate things, but the course is really focused on the foundations that make something look 3D. That is to say, create the sense of form, the illusion of form on paper, um, which are the 12 modeling factors. So it explains those in great detail. And then in the course, mechanically speaking, my main focus is how to control dry media like pencil to create those effects. But the real information is the nature of each of the modeling factors. Um, so if you were to employ them in ink, they would work, they would create the sense of form. But I don't go into detail in the course into how I um, create the sense of form specifically with ink, specifically with pen. That would be a different course or video or something like that.
the goal is cause parasite form. Dude, I would love to be cause parasite with the, uh, what's the broccoli head? I forget what that armor piece is called. But yeah, I would love to be that. I would really love to be that. I, I, would, I would sacrifice everything. My career, my friends, my family, you know, just the ability to be a polite member of this beautiful society that we built. I would sacrifice everything to be a Lovecraftian monstrosity with tentacles, to just be a gibbering, protoplasmic heap of flesh that is constantly growing and ungrowing little dactyl proboscis that I use to probe the world of my prey. Are you kidding me? That sounds better than having kids to me. That sounds way better than having kids to me. I would love to get there. If anybody has a workout plan for that or something that like that, like a three-part ebook, e-course, free course, if you click on the link in my description or something like that, for that, hit me up, send that to me, all right? I'm, I know I'm not that young anymore, but I'm willing to start, all right? I'm willing to get to work here. Build on myself. Draw a cosmic Garuda. I don't actually know what a Garuda is. Ferox says, hi, by the way, old fan. What up? What up? What's good, Farrah? Yeah! Old fans. Love old fans. What's good? What's good? Diathorn says, damn, he's good. Yeah, I am. Did you see Pewd's drawing video, inspiring stuff? I did, actually. It's good for him, man. Draw a stool with hairy feet. By stool, do you mean poo or do you mean like a bar stool? Fucking ellipses. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to anybody who watches this with their kids. I gotta ch I gotta rotate my whole freaking screen there. There we go. Yeah. Well, that first one was all right. Yeah. Well, you know. I don't really know how I stumbled into this life. No pun intended on the fact that I'm a stool with hairy feet. Stumbling. You get what I'm saying? Anyway, where was I? I digress. I don't know how I wound up in this life, you know? I guess I didn't work very hard in school, and maybe I didn't take advantage of all of the connections that I had. But, you know, it ain't so bad. Once you get used to being a bar stool that has hairy feet, you realize there's a lot of benefits, you know? I'm a bit of a pervert. People put their ass on me all day. How much can I really complain when that's what I got to do to make some money, you know? Anyway, yes, doctor. I have this dull pain in my heart that never seems to go away. It wakes me up in the middle of the night. Yeah, I've had it for about 35 years. My wife finally told me, you know, I think you really should go get that checked out. All right, we're doing well here. I mean, this is high quality draftsmanship right here. There you go. Everybody always said, Steven, why don't you take requests? It's like, what are you talking about? There's your request. Ask what people want. There's your, your OC. There's your stool with hairy feet. <sighs> 30 years of drawing right there. Hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt from one of the best design schools in the world. <sighs> you can't fake it, you know? You either know what you're doing or you don't. 
All right, what's next? What do you idiots want? <laughs> this is the only thing I could think to do while a computer sits in a box behind me. What do you think of the, what do you think of the odds that I laid it down on my graphics card? <laughs> it's probably sitting on my graphics card right now. Can you draw a red diamond man sitting on the stool? I honestly don't, I, I don't think I could draw a red diamond man from memory. I don't remember what he looks like. <laughs> I'd have to go look for him. Today is your chance to make him draw an anime waifu. That I'm not doing. That I am not doing. Never! I was referring to the Thai Garuda, ah, I see. Bird head man, mythical monster thing. Fractithis says, Staven, question. First off, good to see you, love you. Thank you, Fractithis, you're very kind. Also, I'm looking into getting a PC or Mac studio with an Intuos Pro. Do you recommend one or the other? Um, yeah, I mean, million dollar question. Uh, I love Mac. Uh, if you like the Mac ecosystem, you know what you're buying it for, right? Um, I did just buy a computer that literally just got here that's sitting behind me and it's a PC. Um, and I resisted that for a long time, but I switched to PC. I hate PCs. I really don't like Windows. Uh, every time I use my wife's Windows computer, I wanna throw up. Um, but it, it has the most support and my, my life has moved on from, from my tech needs just being Photoshop. Now I do a lot of this streaming and I do a lot of recording. And for that, um, it's just compatibility stuff. Like Mac has fallen behind with that. You know, every time OBS adds something, uh, it's always for Windows and NVIDIA graphics cards first. So um, my, old, my old iMac, I mean, it's not that old, it's 2019. Great computer, I've loved it. But, um, you know, streaming and recording uh, high-res video without, um, without lag, without draining my, P without draining my CPU, is, um, you know, it's moved on, you know? Hardware encoders, that's what I'm switching for. So if you have specific tech needs, you gotta go with whatever you need. PC's the most compatible for stuff like that. Um, but um, if you don't have more complex needs like that, uh, you know, I, I, I love Macs. I love Macs. PCs are also way cheaper, you know? Welcome back to the PC Master Race. I am, all I'm gonna say is I'm keeping the box. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. It's on probation as far as I'm concerned. Hi Steven, do you think teaching jobs at universities or ateliers are at risk with AI? Um, not at ateliers. I mean, I can't imagine ateliers being interested in integrating AI. I mean, ateliers are like almost by definition a romantic sort of history facing recreation of these old modes of teaching. So um, I, I, I can't imagine ateliers would be interested in integrating AI. You know, these people are already you know, trying to pretend they live in the 1800s or something, right? Which, that sounds pejorative when I say it, but it's not pejorative. I've taken boot camps at ateliers, considered joining them. Um, it's a beautiful way to live and to study. It just, um, yeah, I think just by, almost by definition of what they're doing in that environment, I'd be very surprised if there was much threat to the atelier ecosystem there. Um, it's just a very small ecosystem. So, you know, how many jobs are really in there? Teaching jobs at universities? I think people I think people will prefer human teachers for the most part no matter what happens. They want to relate to their teachers, you know, they're 
they're, they want to find their teachers aspirational and sort of someone that they can have as a role model and things like that. You know, that's what I looked for in my teachers when I was back in school. Um, but I could totally see it going where, you know, those roles are just way reduced or even if they're not reduced, maybe teaching jobs at things like universities would become very homogenized because everyone is kind of teaching AI one way or the other, you know? But would you keep your hair in the transformation? Yeah, but it'd be in a different place. It'd be in a gross spot. Can you draw a baby warrior versus a giga pit bull? Cuckoo caca, giga pit bull. What kind of warrior I'm doing? Sort of a typical. Again, I'm not going to go look at reference, so what in God's name do pit bulls look like? <laughs> Pitbulls have like a little dip right at the top of their head, right? Do they have big ears or small ears? I think they kind of look like that. Oh, Jesus, I got up. Uh... Cuckoo caca kick a pit bull. I'm just a baby. Brace yourself, you monster. Feel the biting edge of my blade, kick a pit bull. What is wrong with you people? You people disgust me. You get a chance to drive the Ferrari that is Steven Zapata, and this, this is where you go?
You guys don't even know what to do with me. Really stupid. <laughs> I want a Steven Zapata cartoon right now. No, no one could afford it. No one could afford to make it. Netflix, Amazon Prime, Paramount, Peacock, Max. None of them could afford it. They could never pay me enough. They do not have the budget. If anyone out there happens to be the CEO of Max, prove me wrong. Hit me up. A lot of good advice on how to draw pit bulls that I did not read in time. Kind of looks like the dog from Tom and Jerry. Draw the aftermath of the fight, just two small legs standing there. That's too dark. That's too dark. I'm not going to do that. I'll traumatize people. People already love Warrior Baby. All right? People already, look, Warrior Baby is already a world class. Heavily embroidered IP with movies, backpacks, video games, snack pack tie-ins, juicy fruit punches. He, he's in a display rack at the end of the aisle at the supermarket. All right, Warrior Baby is beloved. All right, I wouldn't be surprised if when I open my PC, my graphics card, that the board partner for my graphics card is Warrior Baby. It's a Warrior Baby board partner RTX, all right? I'm not gonna be surprised if that happens because that is the level of cultural impact that Warrior Baby has 
at this point. So we are not going to do him the disservice of cutting him up and having him just be some bloody stumps. All right? As, as the genius creator of Warrior Baby, all right, whoever, whoever said it in the chat, whoever said Warrior Baby versus Giga Pitbull, I hate to tell you, but look up the Copyright Office's rules for who owns this copyright. I, I am the mastermind behind this image. And that's the word that they use. It's not you. You're just an art director who commissioned me. This is my product. Try to stop me. Boom. There it is. There it is. Copyright. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's me. And yeah, I've made a lot of money off of it. I have made a lot of money off of it. So um, I, as, as the person who owns it and runs it and made a lot of money off it, it would be wrong of me to desecrate the brand and hurt the IP by creating gore versions of it. So I'm not going to do that. Draw a sheep with plunger feet. Okay, this, this one can't go far because I, I really don't. I truly don't know what sheep look like. No, I got nothing. What the hell do sheep look like? What my city boy is showing. What even is their overall proportion? <laughs> Also, why are you guys obsessed with feet? <laughs> You're all gross. Oh my God, what even is the overall proportion of sheep? They're low to the ground, right? I don't know how far the plunger leg should go. Original content, please do not steal. Please do not steal. Please draw a guinea pig proud of his homemade lasagna. <laughs> oh man. That, that, I, 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 that one I would look up to get the guinea pig right. I wish we were doing this with more time. The hell do guinea, all right, let me look at what a freaking guinea pig looks like. Oh my God, there's, ba there's barely anything there. <laughs> They're so cute. What even are these little guys? Got to get nice the little Bernies on top of the lasagna. I think my wife's bringing home pizza tonight. Get the nice little Bernies. Hey, babe. I'm glad you're home. 
I made your favorite, my homemade lasagna. I don't know, I just wanted to do something nice for you. I know you've been really stressed out at work lately. I thought maybe we could eat this, have a bottle of wine. Maybe do our favorite thing. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's right. Eating our babies. I thought you'd like that. Love you, babe. Real ragtag group of requests here, folks. Real ragtag group. Joe says, I appreciate the racial double entendre of a guinea pig making lasagna. Hurtful but funny. Joe said it, not me. I did not detect that. Um, the stream is officially racist now. Uh, I expect to be completely canceled by tomorrow morning. I appreciate it. This is Steven Sapita. Steven Sapita here. Do sheep have tails like bunnies? I don't know. Lizard in a tuxedo holding a martini, high-end art baby. I think that's just Gex the Gecko, so I'm not gonna draw that because uh, the Gex the Gecko estate and memorial scholarship will come after me and copyright claim the YouTube channel. Don't go breaking my heart, don't go breaking my heart. Edwin Gonzalez. Says, hey, Stephen, I've been doing the how to draw book for Scott Robertson, but I seem to be stuck on checking my ellipses for the degree without the template. Does it matter if I don't get the perfect degree? Not at all. None, none of that book should be, everything in that book, you don't need to stick to it slavishly. No one actually draws that way. Not even Scott anymore, you know? I, I don't, I'm not sure he ever did, right? He, I, I think Scott would agree, and I think I'm not talking out of my ass here. Uh, he, he was my department chair at Art Center, and I learned perspective from him. Um, you draw freely, and you use all those techniques as diagnostics when things go wrong, right? When you learn them, yeah, it makes sense to kind of try them once or twice in that very regimented way so that they get in your head, but I really mean it. You try it a few times and then you move on. You need to draw freely. You can't draw through and do beautiful, graceful designs, or at least that's for almost nobody. That works for like just Scott, if he even does that. You're supposed to draw freely, and then you use those techniques as diagnostic tools to fix the problems that emerge. He needs gloves or do you want him to burn his tiny hands? Wow, that's very true. I was not projecting myself into the world of the drawing there. Steven, do you know Meat Canyon? Yeah, I've seen his videos. He's very famous. He looks like a Greg. Gex the Gecko, I just felt old now. It was a, it was a long time ago, wasn't it? 
pretty pretty weird vibe for a video game. Draw Mona Lisa by Steve Zapata. Mona Lisa by Steve Zapata. Da Vinci's undisputed masterpiece. The Steven Zapata Mona Lisa. Painted by the virtuoso auteur of the High Renaissance, Leonardo da Vinci, in 1985. The Stephen Zapata Mona Lisa was Leonardo's attempt to improve on what he thought to be his greatest artistic failure, the most boring picture he'd ever done, the first Mona Lisa. Upon confirming, conferring with his friends, Raphael and Michelangelo, they advised him to, instead of being a lame, pathetic little loser and an effete rich boy who couldn't do anything interesting to save his life, why not just man up and make it a Stephen Zapata Mona Lisa instead, said Raphael and Michelangelo as they painted history's most famous frescoes in the Sistine Chapel and in the adjoining room. Leonardo da Vinci, properly excoriated, went back to the studio and immediately fixed the Mona Lisa by producing the Stephen Zapata Mona Lisa. The smile on the Stephen Zapata Mona Lisa has captivated audiences across the ages. Children have been inspired to pursue art and become great artists themselves upon merely a glimpse of the Stephen Zapata Mona Lisa, and they only became better artists if they happened to have an 18 by 24 canvas print of it hanging above their bed. But only the most discerning of parents would have had the foresight and cultural acumen to have purchased such a print for their darling little babies. X-ray technology has shown that da Vinci needed to paint the smile on the Stephen Zapata Mona Lisa no less than 69 times before he came to an adequate solution, one that it was said made even his housemaid tremble with desire. Steven, what's your favorite Da Vinci if you have one? I do not have one. How about a martini glass in a tuxedo holding a lizard? <laughs>
Voilà. Hey Steven, I get why attempting to do your dream images is essential, but don't they inevitably require mastery? I never finish a thing partly because it's so frustrating to not know the fundamentals. Uh, yeah, they probably do require, not, not necessarily mastery, but a level of aesthetic that you imagine them with. But the only way you're going to, the only way you're going to get that in there is if you practice the pictures. I. I I don't advise, I advise very few people to only do their dream images, right? You do need to, if you have that desire for a virtuosic feel in the pictures, you do need to go learn how to do that by learning the fundamentals, right? But you need to do both. That's why I always tell people just, I'm not saying only do the pictures. I'm saying never go through a period in your career where you're only doing the fundamentals. Um, I usually advise a 50-50 split, you know, no matter what your time is. So if you have one hour to draw a day, do 30 minutes doing your images, trying to be creative on your own grounds, and then study for 30 minutes, hopefully addressing things that went wrong in your actual creative fucking output, instead of wasting your time practicing stuff that you aren't actually gonna put in the pictures. Um, I, I just, I, I if you, if you only do the fundamentals and you never engage what is the actual ground of your creativity, the fundamentals are just going to veer you off away from your dream images in all likelihood. If you think that's not possible or that it's unlikely that would happen, talk to more artists. I mean, it's like one of the most common experiences for artists who go down the only fundamentals route. They just... They'll go decades getting completely sidetracked and it'll take them decades to come back and be like, oh yeah, why didn't I just do what I wanted from the start? You know, it's a, it's a painful, painful experience. Have you seen the newest Ghibli film, Boy and the Heron? Is it Ghibli or Ghibli? Um, people are gonna say it's a hard G, soft G. I don't know the difference between hard G, G soft G. So I need to hear it. <laughs> So don't even, th don't throw that in there. Steven, is it true that you find Da Vinci to be overrated? If so, I feel vindicated. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't think he's overrated. I, he's not overrated as the Renaissance man, right? He was really good at a bunch of wild stuff and he had a crazy brain, right? I don't, and I think that's how most people rate him. Um, I don't think he's overrated as a Renaissance man. I think it's just, objectively clear that he was the weakest painter between him, Michelangelo, and Raphael. I think it's clear that Michelangelo and Raphael were better. It's kind of funny that in spite of that, he still manages to maybe the Mona Lisa is the most famous picture. You know, the Sistine Chapel competes, but you know, Da Vinci got it. Da Vinci is competing with the Sistine Chapel with one figure, just a portrait really, while Michelangelo had to, you know, his is dozens of muscular anatomical full figures, just like a much more, you know, forceful attempt at making history's greatest painting. So um, it's just, he's not overrated as a Renaissance man. Um, but yeah, as a painter, yeah, he, you know, he did the right things at the right time. There's 14 Da Vinci paintings, you know, like he just doesn't have the same amount of output as the other guys had. I gotta move myself because I'm hiding my masterful martini glass holding a lizard. A martini glass and a tuxedo holding a lizard. All right, everybody. I had a lot of fun, but I'm going to cut this short because uh, it's getting pretty late and I'm gonna start setting up my new PC. 
so that uh, hopefully I can stream on it mañana because this is going to take a bit. So um, thank you everybody for hanging out. Don't forget that the course is on sale. Um, thank you for your horrible, horrible ideas for things to draw. Um, you should all be absolutely embarrassed of yourselves. I mean, I am a Lamborghini Diablo. That is what I am. I am an absolutely ultra premium, rich person only experience, not for normal people to tell what to draw. I am the luxury car of drawing. And you guys got to take me for a lap on the test track and you stayed in first gear. You didn't even kick in the turbo. I don't know how cars work, but I know you guys should be embarrassed of yourselves. Deeply, deeply embarrassed. You could, you could have had anything. And you got ass cat, stool with hairy feet, horny, cannibalistic, stay-at-home lasagna guinea pig boyfriend, a bunion, just a bunion, just a bunion, a llama with a jetpack, warrior baby fighting giga pit bull, a sheep with blunders for feet, a martini glass wearing a tuxedo holding a lizard, and the Steven Zappa to Mona Lisa. That's what you guys got. None of you, none of you are giving me my due props for honoring the true secret current of Renaissance painting by putting in the background a viewer seeing a UFO. Nobody even registers how deep my knowledge of the vernacular of Renaissance painting goes, that I had the goddamn foresight the insight to put a little guy in the background seeing a UFO so that it could get zoomed in on on ancient aliens? You guys are embarrassing. You guys are embarrassing. You don't know your art history. You don't know what you have access to here. But I guess in a sense, that's, that's my fault. Every day I could educate you guys better. I just don't know if you guys would fucking listen. I really don't. All right, everybody, happy drawing. Uh, if, my, if I'm not here tomorrow, it's because my PC uh, is not working and everything's back in the box, so. <laughs> And then I'll see you on Friday on my Mac. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Goodbye to Sancia. Goodbye to It Is What It Is. Goodbye to Cookie Hand. Goodbye to Matej Kalgar. Goodbye to my dear Joseph Marziliano. Goodbye to Gadujwig Gwig. Goodbye to Paula. Goodbye to Mama Nova. Goodbye to Suplex Mess. Goodbye to B-Man, Colin Gallagher, Plexel, Saman Kucher, the Dujerdom, Sancia, I can't. Mr. Sparkle. Saman Kucher, Sea Dives, and Non-Local Quantum. Take care, everybody. Much love and happy drawing. I will see you soon.